How many mathematicians does it take to tie up a package? Zero. You just need a chord. And you get it chords, circles, secants, and lines. So now we are going on beyond just segments. We will be working with those as well. But we're also working with inscribed angles. So an inscribed angle is uh, an angle whose vertex is on the circle. So see, there's a vertex on the circle. There's a vertex on the circle. And whose sides are made up of chords on the circle. See, so if here's a chord and there's a chord making angle DEF. And there's a chord GH and chord FH making angle GHF. So an inscribed angle is always going to be half the measure of the intercepted arc. This makes it interesting when the arc is a diameter. So if the chord opposite an inscribed angle is a diameter, then the angle is a right value. Uh, it angle is a right angle. Why is that? Well, if it's a diameter, it cuts the circle in half. So this must be 180 degrees. And then if that's 180 degrees, then that means this has to be half of it by the inscribed angle theorem. So this needs to be 90 degrees. So I can actually go ahead and make a little, oops, excuse me, let me get my pointer. I can actually make a little right angle mark right there because I know that if the diameter is opposite, then these have to both be right angles. So DF is a diameter, so angle DEF is 90 degrees. And 4X divided by 5 equals 90. Is, so I just set this value right here equal to the 90 degrees. Now 4x over 5, 4x being divided by 5 equals 90. Let's undo the division first. We're dividing by 5, so I multiply both sides by 5. Once I do that, I'm going to get 4x equals 450. I, 4x is being multiplied by 4. I can undo the division by 4 by, uh, I can undo the multiplication by 4 by dividing by 4. And using my calculator, I get x equals 112.5. Now this next problem is a little interesting because it's an isosceles right triangle. And this one I was saying, oh, that one is the right angle. That's 90 degrees. Here, I don't know what that angle is, or do I? Well, I know FG is a diameter, so I know this angle is 90. But I also know these two legs are isosceles. Well, there's only one isosceles right triangle. It's a 45-45-90. So since it's an isosceles right triangle, this angle right here has to be 45 degrees. So I'm going to set this um, value here equal to 45 and solve for y. First subtract 6 from both sides and I get 3y equals 39. And then I can divide both sides by 3 and I will get y equals 13. Now 11-5, uh, we're looking at angle relationships and circles. Now we kind of touched on this in the 11-4 that we just talked about. Um, when you have these vertices uh, inscribed angles, um, then it's always half the intercepted arc. It's even true if it's a tangent and a secant or chord creating the angle. So whatever this arc is, this angle is half. So one way I could write it is that the measure of angle ABC equals one half the measure of arc AB. And if you want to fill in the rest of your sentence. So when it intersects on the circle at a point of tangency, remember this right here is the point of tangency. And so the angle formed is half the measure of the arc. Now if two secants or chords intersect in the interior of a circle, then the measure of each angle formed is actually the, is half of the sum of the measures of the intercepted, uh, and I should say arcs, not just one arc, but two. See, there's arc AB and arc CB. So for this example, the measure of angle one, it's going to be one half of the measure of arc AB plus the measure of arc CD. Now I know some of you are frustrated because there are no numbers here, but I'm trying to illustrate the general theorem. And we will have some numbers in our examples. Now last but not least, if a tangent and a secant, two, so if I have a tangent and a secant, there we go, two tangents right there, or two secants, and they intersect, notice the intersection is always outside in the exterior of a circle. 
then the measure of this angle is half the difference, not the sum, but the difference of the two arcs. So here I would go arc AD minus arc BD and divide that by 2. Arc EH, I mean EG, minus arc EG, the little one, and divide that by half. And notice how they put an EHG because this is a major arc. It's going above 180 degrees. Um, then for this one I would go arc JN minus arc KM and divide by 2. So in this problem, uh, we have a tangent and a secant that form this angle. And I want to find out what x is. Well, using the theorem from before, I can say x is going to be half of arc DA minus um, arc uh, BD, the measure of arc BD. Now, there's an important thing. If I were to use this right now the way it's written, the calculator will give me the wrong answer because it's only going to put the one half on the first one. So I really need parentheses on this to say calculate the difference first and then multiply by the one half or divide by two if that's your preference. So using that, I say that it's one half of 200 minus 74. 200 minus 74 is 126. Half of that is 63. Now for this other example, um, for these two angles, and I want to, whoops, wrong side. I want to do this angle actually and this angle. These two angles are both congruent, they're vertical angles, and each one is equal to half the average of these two. So you could say the measure of angle AEB equals um, half of the sum. Sum means add, and that would be arc AB plus arc CD. So you add those and then divide by 2. So I set up my equation. The measure of angle AEB equals 1 half of 139 plus 113. And uh, adding those together and dividing by 2, I get 126. I also asked for this angle right here, which I'll do with two marks so you don't mix it up with the other one. That angle is a linear pair with angle AEB. So um, these two angles need to add up to 180. So that's exactly what I did. I said this angle plus that angle equals 180. And that angle is 126. This one I don't know. So I subtract 126 from both sides and I get a measure of 54 degrees. Now our last set of uh, theorems is the chord chord product theorem and the secant secant product theorem. So you can see the chords right here intersecting. If two chords intersect in the interior, notice how it's inside right here, the E, then the products of the lengths of the segments of the chords are equal. So one way I could write it for this problem is I could say the length of CE, pretend that's an E, times, and I got to stay on the same uh, chord, ED equals AE times BE. Now you'll notice that the E pops up in all four segments, that center point right there. So if it doesn't on your problem, then there could be, you probably don't have the right piece. The secant secant product theorem is you probably go, oh, it's AB times BE and CD times CE. No, actually it doesn't work that way. It also is going to use that point for every segment that's in the product. So if two secants intersect in the exterior outside of a circle, then the product of the lengths of one secant segment and its external segment equals the product of the lengths of the other segment and its external segment. And you're probably wondering what I just said. So the easiest way to picture this is it's the whole segment, which is say AE, and that's not what goes in the blank, hold on, times, so we can say whole, times the outside segment, the segment that is not inside the circle. In this case, that would be BE equals CE times DE. So it's kind of, it kind of reminds you of those similar triangles we were doing. It's not the same thing, but it sort of reminds you of it. Now notice that there's an E on every one of these as well. So whatever your point is, it should be on each segment. Whole times outside equals whole times outside. So let's go ahead and apply these. Oops, and I wrote over it. <laughs> um, 
We have an archaeologist discovers a portion of a circular stone wall shown by Arc ST in the figure. So the stone wall is right here on Arc ST. We know that ST, the segment, that this cord is 12.2 meters. So they had took some tape and measured it. And then they measured the distance from here to there. They want to know what is the original diameter of the circle, circular wall. And we want to round to the nearest hundred. So the things we know, ST is 12.2. TU is 6.1, US is 6.1. Those are both congruent and they cut it in half. And UR is 3.9. What I don't know is this piece that goes the rest of the way. If I had this piece, I could find the whole diameter. Well, um, I do know that TU times US is going to equal UR times this piece right here, which I'm going to say is the rest of the diameter. Substituting in the numbers, 6.1 times 6.1 equals 3.9 times x. And I could go ahead and multiply this out, but I'm just going to go ahead and divide both sides by 3.9. So x is equal to this value right here. Using my calculator, I get 9.54, rounded to the nearest hundredth. And since I'm just working in one dimension, which are lengths and distances, I went ahead and kept it at the hundredth. If I was working in area, I usually like to go a little bit further before I get to my final answer. So now I know that this distance is 9.54 and they want to know the whole diameter. Well I know the short distance is 3.9 so I just have to add the 9.54 to the 3.9 to get the whole diameter. By the way I don't know if you noticed we actually skipped there is no example 3. So example 4 is the next is this one and our final example labeled example 5 which is really example 4. All right, um, we need to find x and the length of each seg secant segment. Say that really quickly. So find x and the length of each secant segment. And what I have here, we're going to use that same whole times outside equals whole times outside. So whole times outside equals whole times outside for both of these problems. So the whole is x plus 8 and the outside is 8. I'm going to actually put the 8 in front because it's easier for distributing property. Now I'm going to say 9 plus 7 is the whole times 7 and I'm going to put the 7 in front. So 8 times x plus 8 equals 7 times 9 plus 7. Distributed property 8x plus 64 equals 16 times 7. Uh, that's 16 times 7 is 112. Subtract 64 from both sides. I get 8x equals 48 or x is 8. Now it asks for the length of each secant segment. So I need to find this segment GE and DE. Well GE is 6 plus 8 which is 14 and DE is 9 plus 7 which is 16. For this next problem uh, it's really interesting because the secant here is really a tangent isn't it? It only intersects at one point. So, but I can still treat it the same way. This x is going to be the whole and the outside. So I'm going to use it twice. So I'm going to have 15, I'm sorry, 20, the whole times the outside, 5, equals x times x. So x times x equals 5 times 20. 20 I get from 15 plus 5. So x squared is 100, which makes x 10. And then if I go find every possible segment here, I can say MJ is 15, JL is 5 because it's right there on the picture, ML is 20 by adding those two, and LK is 10. 